How's it going guys? I wanted to do an update on my greenhouse and a little bit on my apple breeding project. I have some of my crosses from last year. These are apples that I planted and this was kind of a bad way of labeling them because I was hoping that you know every line of seed that I planted would sprout but they didn't and so if a spread sprouts and then it lays down and then it grows again kind of like these I don't know exactly which line they came from I do have um, some red flesh in here and I think that they are crimson crisp and red love era crosses because two of these in this row here actually three of them and one is coming from here and so it's either crimson crisp and era or sweet 16 crossed with era and i'm kind of leaning towards uh crimson crisp because i think i was having some trouble with germinating sweet 16 before avo early fuji came up that's just open pollinated um Another one I'm excited about is Burgundy crossed with Williams Pride because it's super vigorous. This seedling grew like four feet. So it could be good and bad, but Burgundy has really good flavor, like intense flavors. And Williams Pride is early, they're both early. So I'm hoping to produce a really nice early apple with that cross. I got Spartan crossed with Rubella. And then uh, some of these didn't come up. I crossed Bite Me with Wixen. Sweet 16 was crossed with Gold Rush. And the, the so the first name is the seed parent. And then the name that comes after is the pollen parent. And I don't think any of the Sweet 16s came up here. So that's why over here i'm leaning towards the fact that you know crimson crisp actually germinated this entire line because crimson crisp had very viable seeds and i was about to replant or repot all of these and i noticed a line of seedlings coming up i don't know if that's williams pride coming up it's possible that that's my Williams Pride Discovery Cross coming up right here. Or it could be Whit Whitwick Pippin, but I'm kind of doubting that that's there. So that's most likely the Williams Pride that's coming up right now, which I'm also excited about. Basically two crosses, but both done in reverse. Williams Pride's the seed parent and over here Burgundy's the seed parent with Williams Pride as the pollen. So pretty cool. And then I got some more seedlings from last year outside over here. It's windy out here. So I apologize for the noise. Uh, I have some Red Love Medusa just open pollinated stuff. Burgundy crossed with golden russet. I'm excited for those as well. You can see that these are red flesh coming up. And that's most likely the, gold, the red love will do so. I crossed gold rush with cosmic crisp. That one I'm excited about. And then King David crossed with golden russet. It's gonna produce, should produce a very intense flavored apple bunch of seedlings of those. Sorry about the wind out there. That's why I figured I'd do a greenhouse video today. I turned the fan off because, because of the noise so you can hear me better. So yeah, I really like the AC Infinity fans. That one's been running for over a year now. This has been running for over a year. That's funny. In the video, it looks like it's standing still. It's actually spinning quite fast. It's just the frames per second 
are lining up to make this thing look like it's going so slow. This is the 14 inch fan and this is running. It has 10 different speeds. You can control it with this remote control. This is running 24 seven just to keep the air moving in the greenhouse. That one only turns on when it's too hot or too cold to pump the hot air underground. On these sunny days, I really raised the temperature of the soil pretty quick. Just about a week ago, it was below 50. Now it's above 50. So it's coming up real quick. I got tomatoes planted in here. Uh, so back to my apple breeding project. I got more seedlings coming up. Super excited about this cross right here. I got Rebella crossed with Red Love Aduso. And when you use the non-red flesh as the seed parent and the results are a red flesh seedling, you know that the cross was successful and it's not and it wasn't the flower wasn't contaminated. Notice that already two of them, one of them shows really good signs of red flesh this one a little bit some of them come up and have some rot on them i don't know why but that's all part of the plan this next one is just i think uh, a mass seeding of uh, a green apple that i found i can just use those as rootstock I have Gold Rush crossed with Crimson Crisp, not coming up yet. Here's here's a cool one. Wine Crisp crossed with Red Love Aduso, Red Flesh. The Wine Crisp is not a Red Flesh apple and it was the seed parent. And I have two seedlings already coming up as Red Flesh, so I know the cross was successful. And look at this one. Does three leaves in the very beginning. Uh make it a triploid probably not but still that's pretty cool how the cotyledons or whatever you call them are tripled on this one i got some that aren't germinating yet uh, that's just regular gold rush I got some pears germinating, um, just Gold Rush open pollinated. Uh, Gold Rush crossed with Crimson Crisp on that one, already germinating. That's going to be a good apple, I think. Wine Crisp crossed with Gold Rush, already germinating. Gold Rush crossed with Wine Crisp backward crosses back and forth that's just gold rush uh enterprise crossed with red love a do so no red flesh seedlings yet but notice that when you cross with the red flesh apple not all the seedlings come up as red flesh and most of these crosses the seeds all came out of one or two apples and so even the seeds from the same apple can yield one regular and one red flesh apple seedling. So just so everyone knows that even every separate seed in the same apple will result in a different variety. That's one of the reasons why I planted some. This is Gold Rush 10 seeds. Uh, what that means is all the ten, all of the 10 seeds came out of one apple. So it, I'm trying to germinate like, because some, uh, some apples have eight seeds, some have 10. I'm trying to find one that can germinate all 10 and grow out all the 10 seedlings and then see the differences among all those 10 seedlings after it yields fruit. And basically those are gonna be all 10 seeds that came out of one apple and we'll see the differences that that yields. So uh, 
yeah we'll see i'm excited for some of my own varieties coming soon inspired by stephen edholm to start some apple breeding so hopefully you guys will be seeing more of my own red flesh varieties and my own crosses coming soon to a city near you i got a bunch of pawpaws and persimmons that i repotted and planted in buckets these are persimmons this is romeo bush cherry pawpaws i've noticed that the pawpaw seedlings that I got from Peaceful Heritage are all leafing out earlier than my other seedlings from other sources, from Canada and whatnot. So I'm trying to grow out some of the seedlings that show very late budding for our climate. So I'm definitely not going to choose those. Maybe I can just use those as rootstock. But some of these are very promising. It's hot in the greenhouse and they're not even budding out yet. So I'm also looking to breed some pawpaws for the Pacific Northwest. That's a project for the future. I got lots of projects lined up. Just the time needed to complete everything is never enough. There's more pawpaws that I potted up into tree pots. More, more pawpaws. So these are, a lot of these pawpaw seedlings that I have are seedlings of cultivars. So this was an Allegheny seedling. And um, somebody sent me some batches of seed of different cultivars and they were all labeled and I planted them. These are just wild papa seedlings, so I want to experiment the difference between wild papa rootstock versus uh, wild papa seedling rootstock versus cultivar papa seedling rootstock and see the difference in uh, fruit size, fruit quality, late budding, all the characteristics we need. We, need, we also need early ripening cultivars here in the Pacific Northwest especially way up by Canada here in the northwest corner of Washington. We don't get enough heat during the summer to ripen our pawpaws. But check this out though. My Shenandoah pawpaw is about to flower. And also, I have an Allegheny pawpaw in here that is also flowering. There's another flower right there. Only two flowers per tree for now, but that's exciting. It's exciting. I want to start grafting persimmons this year and pawpaws, and I want to graft some of my cold hardy citrus rootstock. I use the fabric pots and I bury them in the ground here in the greenhouse for the cold hardy citrus. There's the doggo seedlings that I started indoors in the winter time, doing very well. Some of the leaves are curling because the temperature fluctuates a lot in the greenhouse, so they're kind of stressed, but that's okay. I got some dill in here. Uh, I got I uh, set up this trellis to grow passion fruit. This is the Frederick passion fruit variety, and then the one on the other side is a seedling of a purple passion fruit that I planted myself. And hopefully by the end of summer, this trellis will be covered with passion fruit vine. And hopefully the following year I can get fruit. They might freeze to the ground but passion fruit should still fruit from the fresh growth that comes out from the root system. So we will see. And I have some parsley growing here. Pineapple guava survived. Oh, what survived the winter? 
Let's cover that real quick. Pineapple guava survived. Flying colors. Um, Awari Satsuma Mandarin survived very well. It's starting to put on growth. You can see the buds. Um, what else survived? Bay leaf survived. Smith's red uh, orange. I cut it back a lot because I was having scale problem last year. And that's why I purchased some beneficial insects. I got the assassin bugs and the green lacewing eggs from Arbico Organics. The year before I released these, I did not have a problem with scale in the greenhouse. And last year I had an infestation and I did not release any green lacewing. So I recommend Arbico Organics because it seems to work. I'll definitely confirm the experiment this year if because I, I know I had an infestation of of the bugs last year. And so if, if the scale does not show up this year, because it already started showing up early season when it started getting warm. And I just released the green lacewean eggs a uh, week and a half ago and the assassin bugs. So if I know these were heavily infested with scale. So I know there's gonna be scale emerging in the citrus areas because that's what they were attacking. And if all these citruses will be fine this year, I know that the lace wings are working and the assassin bugs are working. So I think that's it for today. This video is getting kind of long. My fig is starting to push growth also. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. One thing I forgot to mention, the avocado tree did end up freezing down to the roots. It got really cold in the winter. I didn't want to heat it too much. And this is where it was. It froze all the way down to the rootstock. Kind of sad. It's like two inches in diameter here. So it'll probably shoot up some shoots from the rootstock. I did end up regrafting it back to the same rootstock uh, we'll see if the graft takes but i think this time i want to bury the scion well the i want to bury it all the way up to the lila graft so that the lila can root and hit, hopefully impart a little more cold hardiness to this plant because this is just um it, it's a super vigorous rootstock but it's not a mexican rootstock so I need, I need both. I do need the vigor, which this provides, but I think this did not provide enough cold hardiness and that's maybe part of the reason why the avocado died. So the next step is to try Leela on its own rootstock and maybe some of the leftover rootstock that I call Rootzilla underneath it. But Rootzilla is just a, I think it's a Guatemalan and West Indian cross of avocado rootstock. I just planted a seed, but the avocado seemed like it was like a large West Indian, uh, I mean, large yeah, West Indian type, and it could have had some Guatemalan traits in it as well. So that's the, the sad tragedy of my avocado tree. But that's kind of how it goes. You know, you test things, see what goes and see what doesn't. Pineapple guava did well.